when I heard your story, it reminded me of Henrietta Lacks, uh, yep. who sells they took without anybody's notice and uh, <laughs> made billions and billions of dollars over the years uh, because those cells could not die, right? So they've been testing all kinds of things all over the globe, selling her cells. And, uh, you know, we, we heard, hear about that from a book, right, uh, several yep. years ago. Your cells kill COVID on contact. And I understand now you understand that it kills more than COVID. Talk to us about that's, that. that. That's correct. I think the last time I was here, I, I told you we found out my blood kills uh, every variant as well. At least it did through the Delta variant. I don't know about the Omicron variant because has, my blood hasn't been tested in a few months. But as of last summer, it, it was killing each of the variants with even more ease than it did the original. Mm. And that included the Delta variant. Um, I don't know about the Omicron variant, but I know it's more transmissible, but it isn't as powerful. So I'd be shocked if, it, if my blood didn't. But I guess the most interesting thing that's happened, I found that quite honestly, is like because these super antibodies are basically are still concentrated and running through my body, it's been almost more than two years since I've even had as much as a cold, a sore throat, runny nose, anything, no allergies, nothing. Basically, I talked with Dr. Lance Liotta from George Mason. He's the co-founder and the co-director of the Center for Applied Proteomics and Molecular Me Medicine. And he's also a former deputy director of the NIH. Basically, his hypothesis is that I have a supercharged immune system, basically, which means the super antibodies are running through my body and killing anything and everything. Mm. And normally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought too much about it because, you know, right now we're in a pandemic. Everybody's kind of, you know, staying, staying away from people, not interacting as much, wearing masks, washing and, and sanitizing our hands more than, than normal. But at one point, beginning of the pandemic, I had the onset of a toenail fungus. Never had one before. Been an athlete my whole life. Never had one. I know people who have. I know they, they are paying to get rid of. I know they require prescription medication. And I, of course, have planned to get it, get it taken care of because, you know, nobody wants to walk around with jacked up toes, right? So uh, everything happened with the pandemic. And, of course, then we all had bigger fish to fry. So I f totally forgot about the toenail fungus. And it wasn't until a few months later that I noticed it was completely gone. My body's completely eradicated it without my tr having treated it in any way, shape, or form. So Dr. Leota basically thinks I have a supercharged immune system. Um, this is a hypothesis at this point because I, I, have, I don't have a scientific team working with me as of right now. But um, as of this point right now, at least temporarily, he's beating the common cold. It's kind of crazy. So, so I'm imagine we're talking with John Hollis. The number here is 866-801-8255. Supercharged immune system. So you go on the subway with no mask, breathing, taking deep breaths, <laughs> licking on the subway poles, you out there. So what are the things that you feel confident doing as a result of knowing that your body, or do you not play around? Do you still mask up and... I mean, I, I do. I'm, 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 a, I'm a former sports writer my whole life. So, of course, it's like there's always a sports analogy. To me, it's kind of like having a no hitter going to the ninth inning. You know, you don't change what you've been doing. You keep dancing with the girl who brung you, right? And so I still do the same thing. Still wear, wear my mask, wash my hands and everything. But you, know, you go out, you get your hair cut, you get, get your, you know, go to the grocery store or whatever. And quite honestly, I feel very confident that I'm, I'm going to be just fine, extremely confident. Mm. I was thinking you might could go and just be breathing some of that into the air and we could just be picking it up from you, you traveling around on the subway. I wish you're that easy. I wish you're that easy. Now you mentioned you don't have a team and this is one of the reasons why I want, wanted you to come in. Yep. A team of scientists working with you. You would think Harvard, <laughs> Harvard's research team would call you to study your blood the way they did, you know, Henrietta Lacks but I guess that was free, right? So they could get away right, with right. exploiting exactly. it. But you, so, so you haven't been contacted by Merck, by Pfizer, by Moderna. No, nobody has br briefly talked with Pfizer. Briefly talked some people from Harvard, but it's very kind of lukewarm talks. I mean, you know, I, I'm not sure why you could ask them why why they you know just kind of lukewarm. But I would have thought there would have been a sense of urgency. That's for sure. Interesting. No, they're like sussing you out. What's in it for us? What can we get from this guy? Maybe we just kill him and then his family will let us have his body and then we tell get you, all tell of you, it. Tell, no, no, we're not putting that out in the universe. We don't I'm want a John movie Hollis. fan. You know, I'm like, you know, what's the what's the plan? How do we get him to be the next Henrietta Lacks? I mean, it's it's all mystifying to me. And you you, you talked about Henrietta Lacks. You know, doing a lot of research, I found that currently there are more than eleven thousand patents on her blood cells to this day. Eleven thousand. These people are making money hand over fist. And the, the, another little piece about Henrietta Lacks, there was about a 20 year period where they thought they were making discoveries, but then they found out that it was her 
cells that had just contaminated everything. So all these things that they had have already have become discoveries. They're not going to go back and tell, you know, those weren't discoveries, but they know that for that period of time, it was still her cells as well. Well, I think her family's federal lawsuit they filed Labor Day weekend was a game changer as well. I think you've got a lot of pharmaceutical companies and everybody else around the world paying very close attention to how that plays out. And they're going to come up with a reason why it's for the good of everybody and we can't be going back and doing anything about it. I mean, her family was living in places with, with dirt floors, okay? Mm -hmm. That's how poor that family was. And for seven, yep. seven, zero, 70 years, uh, biotech companies and others made billions and billions of dollars off of the study of herself. So let me ask you this. Are there black scientists? Like, I feel like, again, there's an opportunity here. There's got to be some scientists listening right now with a lab somewhere. Like, I feel like we need to have culturally responsive pharmaceutical companies. Why don't we have pharmaceutical companies? What is it that, that you know, how do you build a pharmaceutical company? I think these are the questions we need to start asking because John Hollis has supercharged cells that need to be studied. Yep. Can we you know, I, I, I'm, I'm happy to help. I'm looking forward to helping as many people as I can. I can provide the blood, but I need somebody else to partner with, provide the scientific expertise we need. All right, we're going to stay in contact. Uh, Meharry, don't we have like black places that they have like these? Or are they funded by, so this is when it gets insidious. Like who's funding? These well, ahead, you it know, costs a lot of about... money too. That's, you touched on an important to topic. It costs a lot of money to do what they need to do as far as like harvesting my antibodies, mass reproducing them, go through all the testing, all that stuff. It's going to cost a lot of money. Okay, so I'm going to throw something in here that um, you, I don't know, you might've thought about it. Have you thought about going to Southeast Asia? Because they have, um, the I mean, this, I'm this, sorry, hold up. They have the finest pharma in the world. And Karen Space is because of the campaign that the US pharma has done against South Asian pharma because all of our supplies for everything comes from Southeast Asia. They make everything. And then we do campaigns. And if you take a, a drug from there, rats will come out of you. They, when, when Gandhi was in, in place, she made it so that no laws could keep them from manufacturing drugs that would help their people. Now that TPT thing has, you know, clamped down on them, but they've got the money, they've got the researchers, they've got the people for the clinical trials, Southeast Asia, and they have a government really funds their pharma. Um, there's a movie called Fire in the Blood, which is sort of a list of all of the scientists who were involved with going against U.S. big pharma when they were coming up with the um, cures to, to protect people with HIV. And India was going to give it away for free because they could make it. And US came down hard on them. So, you know, that's something to look at. Well, I'm certainly open to anything and everything. I just want to, you know, want to help as many people as we can. I lost, you know, several, a bunch of people I know have gotten sick. I lost a good friend who died terribly to COVID. And I just know that the person you could help could be somebody else that I know or love. So if I can prevent another family from going through what my good friend went through, I want to do it. So if you guys know anybody. <laughs> All right. So well, let me tell you, your big, your good friend, your good friend, here's the question. Did your, did you try anything with your good friend? Did you be like, can, can we just give him some of my plasma? Like, what, what were you like, it's my friend. What, what can we try? Let's try it. Well, can't hurt. Unfortunately, I didn't even know he'd been sick until he was, he'd already died. Okay. We hadn't talked well, a few well, weeks and it, it, you know, he was a sports writer as well and a journalist. And I, you know, in a few weeks, I just found that he died and it just, just absolutely crushed me for the reasons you mentioned, because I just wish you just think you there's something I could have done if I had just known, maybe. And that's, gonna, you know, gonna... that's, that's another issue, too. In the last few months, I've had several people who reached out to me with a loved one sick and asked me, quite honestly, if they could get some of my blood. Can you imagine getting that phone call?